But today I'll talk about how to build up spiritual life of people and guide them along. Is that what you like to hear? Okay, to build up the spiritual life of people and to guide them along. Now, I've been a pastor since '83, 1983, and for 15 years I was serving in the traditional church, and I find it very hard to build up the spiritual life of people. Um, in 1998, I experienced the Holy Spirit. It totally transformed my life, transformed my ministry, transformed the way I built up people's spiritual life. And uh, I thank God that everywhere I go, I build up people's spiritual life. And it's, it's a great gift from God. I, first, I want to share that experience. Uh, in 1998, in a meeting in Hong Kong, an evangelist came to Hong Kong. And he, in the meeting, part of it, he laid hand on people. And he laid hand on me, and I felt great power, like electricity, suddenly entering me. And at the same time, I felt great love, very strong love. And I, I, felt, I felt comforted, and I cried for a short time. And a great love filled me so strong, I cried for a long time. And then I said, wow, I didn't know I can experience God like that. At the same time, I also experienced like burdens go away. I also smell an aroma like in heaven. I just feel like in heaven. And I, I said, I didn't know I can have that relationship with God. So I spent a, a long time Pray, uh, praying to God every day. You know, that night when I went home, it was very late already. And I s kept praying to God. And I spent much time praying to God. And also God helped me to take care of different problems in my life. And what happened is I took care of different sins or problems or, or uh, any kind of negative emotions. All this I took care of in my life. And it, first it helped me spiritually. I really took care of different problems. And one day, uh, uh, now all this I have a reason to say. One day I call someone and share my experience of praying, uh, of experiencing the Holy Spirit. And, but that person did not like that. Uh, because she just did not believe in, uh, in feeling the Holy Spirit. And she was unhappy that I had that experience. And after the phone call, I prayed again. You know, before that, every time I pray, I <coughs> cry to God. I can feel the power of God. Yes. And later, I found the joy of the Lord. Every time I think of Jesus, the joy would just flow out. Yes. <laughs> if I just, I, if I don't stop it, the joy would keep coming. Yes. So every day, from morning till night, every day, I kept the joy of the Lord. Every time, you know, all the time, uh, when I pray. First, I spent time praying to God, and then when I go out, when I do other things, I kept praying to God. Sometimes you saw me, you see me sitting down, maybe closing my eyes. I'm loving God, and I can feel the love of God, the peace of God, the power of God go through me. Anytime, even in the, in the middle of the night. But when I finished that phone call, I find that I lost the joy because I was affected by her. And then I said, I have to take care of that. The thought, you know, I believe it came from God. I have to take care of that. So I called her again. And I said, you know, if I made you unhappy, I'm sorry. But actually, you know, I did not do anything wrong. I just shared. But she could not accept that. So I said, you know, if I made you unhappy, I'm sorry. And then uh, she was still angry. And after the phone call, I said, I already took care of it. I already did what I can do. There's nothing more I can do. And I can just let, let it go because I already took care of the problem. I, I did all I can do. So I just pray again and I, the joy came back when I let go. In this incident, God told me, any problem in the future, any sin, any negative thought, any negative emotion, Take care of it right away. And I can continue to have this joy and the power of the Holy Spirit. And also I pray for many people. I brought many, many people to Christ. I also revived many spiritual 
uh, the spiritual life of many people and build up many people for ministry. So this is very crucial to me. First, to live in the love of God all the time. To live in the love of God all the time. So I have the confidence God loves me. God has a wonderful plan in my life and take care of different problems. And then I move on <laughs> to bless people. And I find that I can build up the spiritual life of many people. So how do we build up the spiritual life of many people? First, I believe that we have to live in the love of God. When we live in the love of God, then we won't be under pressure. Then we'll be enjoying ministry. Then we will be strengthened by the love of God. This is very crucial to the biblical teaching and to my own spiritual life and to my ministry. Now, how how to do that? How to live in the love of God? Actually, God loves us all the time. The Bible is full of teaching like that. That, you know, that uh, Psalm 139 verse 5. God is in front of me and behind me. And God laid His hand on me. He's always around me. He's always blessing me. And in Romans 8, He talks about nothing can separate me from the love of God. That means He's holding on to us all the time. His love is holding on to us all the time. And nothing can separate us from the love. His love is sticking to me. Sticking to me. He's loving me all the time. So if I just believe that, then I will be relaxed. And now some people cannot just take the Word of God and believe it totally. But we need to learn to just believe God's Word. But we can also see that very real in our daily life. How? How do we know that God is in front of me and behind me and laying His hand on me? Because every time, actually, we've, we've, we all experience God talking to us, guiding us to come close to Him. That's God talking to us. God, God talks to us all the time. God talks to our heart to move us to come to Him. So He's always very close to us. He's in our heart, talking to us, guiding us, leading us. And even when we sin, <coughs> God doesn't forsake us. God doesn't just forget us. God will keep talking to us. Many Christians sin for many years, fall away from God many years. God will keep talking to them, guiding them. So God doesn't stop working in our life even when we sin. And whenever we pray to Him, if we open our heart and worship in spirit and truth, His peace will come down. His love will come down. His joy will come down. All this shows that God is living. And also in our daily life, we can see a lot of areas uh, to see God's love Every, everywhere. For instance, right here. Can you just relax your body and think of Jesus' love and close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. Relax your body and take a few deep breaths. Do you feel comfort? Very simple thing, just the air and our body. You just relax, you feel comfort. It came from the love of God. Because God loves us, He wants us to enjoy life. He created air, He created our body that will respond to air and respond to relaxation. It's, he's very good. Do you like food? Food is created specially by God. Actually, natural food is beautiful and wonderful and delicious and also it's good for our health. Do you like sleeping? It's created by God. For us to relax and enjoy and we feel good after we sleep and we feel good while sleeping. It's all because of God's love. And God says, you know, would a mother forget her cycling a baby? Even if she forgets the baby, I will not forget you. Amen. That He always think about us. God has this nature of remembering people. Remembers each one of us by name. Remember each one of us, our life, <laughs> our nature, our personality, and also always wants to bless us. That's how special He is. And He put that love into mothers and fathers of people and of animals. 
Even animals have that love toward the babies, that they will take care of the babies. The animals will fight against bigger animals who try to hurt the babies. The animals would have this nature. It all came from God's nature of love and relationship. Do you enjoy the relationship with people? It all came from God because God wants relationship. Yes. So from all this we can see God's love. But many people, even Christians, don't live in God's love. They live in God's law. Because from childhood, very often we live in the law. People tell us, you don't do so well. You're not a good boy. You're not a good girl. I don't like you. You have to do this. You have to do that. Law, always the law. I mean, sometimes there's love, but not too often. So very often we grow up in the law and then when Christian, now the law is good, the law of God is good, but we need the love. If God doesn't have love, just have the law, He can be a very stern, straight God. But with love, it makes God beautiful. Now so many people, many Christians, we know God is love. We all know that. We do experience some love of God, but still Christians live in the law very often. We always say, oh, I haven't prayed much. I've sinned again. I haven't obeyed God. I haven't brought many people to Christ. And ministry will say, oh, my church doesn't grow. Maybe it's part of my fault. Oh, my people are not good. And, and preachers will also have a tendency to tell people, you're not doing good. You're not obedient. So very often in our heart, in our mouth, in our relationship, husband to wife, very often the husband said, you didn't cook my breakfast. You didn't do this, you didn't do that. And the wife said to the husband, you didn't listen to me, you didn't help me. It's always you didn't, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. It's very often the law. Very often, very seldom do you see husband and wife always saying, you are very precious in my sight. I love you. I like you. I want to do this for you. I want to make you happy. That is gospel, good news, blessings. But very often people's words is full of the law. So when we want to be able to guide our people, first we need to live in the love of God. Not to live in the law. When we have the love of God and then we obey the word of God wholeheartedly, it's like this. When people love the Lord, uh, when, when people fall in love with a girl or with a, a boy, they will always try to do something to please the person, right? They, you know, if you see a person fall in love with someone, as soon as they get off work, they want to go to see the girlfriend or boyfriend. And, and they always think of the person when, and as soon as that person appears, this person will smile, right? Very happy. And willing to do anything. Any moment the girlfriend likes something and the boy knows that, immediately he will buy it for her. But after the marriage, they may not do it. Because after marriage, they live in the law. <laughs> Before marriage, they live in love. But in the later stage, they already start demanding. <laughs> but with God, yes. He first loves us. Yes. Actually, many people misunderstand God and think that God just demands us to do a lot of things. Actually, first, God first loves us and to move us. Actually, God wants us to be motivated by the love of God, not to be just following the law. You know, Paul said that he's motivated by the love of God, that, you know, he's willing to die for Jesus because of Jesus' love, that his, his love motivated us. So when we live in the love of God, then first we will relax in the love of God and enjoy life. Every day we can have the prayer of grace. What is the prayer of grace? It's declaring the grace of God. It's something like this. You can pray with me. If you pray with the people like this, they will, they will love God more and they will be strengthened more. Can you say it with me? And you can stand up please. You can say this prayer. Thank you Lord Jesus for loving me. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving me. You are in front of me and behind me. You are in front of me and behind me. You are laying your hands on me. You are laying your hands on me. You are blessing me now. You are blessing me now. I am precious in your sight. I am precious in your sight. You care about me. You care about me. You have a wonderful plan in my life. You have a wonderful plan in my life. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You are so nice to me. You are so nice to me. I can enjoy you. I can enjoy life. I can enjoy life. I want to love you more. I want to love you more. Because you love me. Because you love me. You are so precious in my sight. You are so precious in my sight. You are the most important person in my life. You are the most important person in my life. I want more of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Now the first part was a prayer phrase. Declaring the love of God, declaring the grace of God, declare you can also declare the forgiveness of God, the acceptance of God. And then we respond to God by praise and worship and loving God. If we live like that, then we live in a very relaxed way and a loving way. And our words will be words of grace instead of words of lo the law. What is the words of law? Many people say words of law all the time. They will say, do this, do that, you have to do this. Trust in God more. It's telling people, trust in God more. When people tell you, trust in God, you, you say, I worry about something. You say, you trust in the Lord. It's actually telling people to do something. There's a different way to say it. You say, the Lord cares about you. He knows your needs. He wants to help you. You just trust in Him and He'll bless you. Is it very different? This is word of grace, telling them God is loving you. God is blessing you. God wants to do great things for you. That way, it will motivate people to love God, to respond to God. Instead of saying, trust in God. Have you heard people say, you, oh, you, you say, I worry about something. They'll say, don't worry, trust in God, pray. God will help you. It's always saying, you do this, you do that, you do all this. It's always telling people to do. But if we can say, God knows your need. God wants to help you. And God has the strength to help you. God plans to help you. You just call on Him, He will bless you. That way, people will have more faith in God. So that's the first step to let them know the love of God. And then we can tell them too, God is love and God is also providing. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be given to you. Yes. Now this verse talk about God wants to bless people. Actually the Bible talks about God blessing all people. Uh, God you know, says that, Jesus said that. The sun, God causes the sun to shine on good people and bad people. And the rain fall, fall on good people and bad people. God gives his general grace to all people. God gives a four season to all people. But God gives specific grace to people who love Him. When people seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to them. Now, you might say, well, how come God doesn't just give to all Christians? People might say, well, if God just give it to me, then I don't have to do all these things. The point is, God cannot give His full blessing to all Christians. The reason is, for instance, you think of this, the Christians fight at home. Do, you know, say negative things at home and have bad relationship with the family members. Always get angry. Can you have peace? No. Because he live in a, world, a life of sin. When people live in a life of sin, he cannot get the blessings of God. When people live in sin, because then we're separated from God. But when we live in a relationship with God, a close relationship with God, and also in obedience, not in sin. Now you might say, is this the law then? Let me tell you. It's God desire to bless us. His blessing is like rain coming down all the time. We just open our heart and then receive the blessing. It's just a way to receive the blessing and not let anything block the blessing. 
if we just open our heart, have a good relationship with Him, His blessing will keep coming. But many people don't know that. They just think believe in Jesus is enough. Faith in God, you know, faith in Jesus will bring salvation. That is biblical teaching. But it is not the whole teaching. So some people say, believe in Jesus and I'll have salvation. That is not the whole teaching. The other teaching is when you trust in God, you have a good relationship with Him and you obey Him and all the blessings will come to you. What does that mean? Because we are saved by grace. But when we are saved, salvation also brings good works, right? When people don't have good relationship with God and don't obey God, then they don't get the blessings of God. The reason is, when they're angry, they block the blessings of God. Mm. When they have sins, they block the blessings of God. And many people are concerned about that. And many people don't know that God is a God who blesses us. So when I guide people, I always tell people, I mean, when I uh, do evangelism, all, I always tell people, God wants to bless you. God is a God who blesses us. When we trust in God and follow Him, He will bless us in every way. So when people know that, when I have few things we do, we trust in God, have a good relationship with Him, and obey Him, then His blessings will come to us. The Bible teaches us that. When we trust in Him, and when we have good relationship with Him, and obey Him, His blessings will continue to come to us. Now this would give more people motivation for non-believers and for Christians. How? For non-Christians, when they know that, Jesus can bless my life. And when we pray for them, they can experience God. They can, uh, you know, I pray for many people, they can experience the peace of God, the comfort of God, the healing of God, the joy of the Lord, the love of the Lord. And then, and then I asked them, did you experience anything? They said, yes, I experienced peace. I feel very peaceful. And I said, God has blessed you. He said he'll give you peace. Now he has blessed you. Do you want God to bless you more? And then when they're willing, then I'll tell them the gospel and pray with them to accept Jesus. So when I bring people to Jesus, I tell them, God blesses you. So this is one thing I tell them when I preach the gospel. When they believe in Jesus, I also tell them, God will bless you when you have a good relationship with Him. This will make people motivated to follow Jesus. We don't just tell people, you obey God more, you love God more, you do this, you do this. But we tell them, God wants to bless you. When you live, when you have a close relationship with you, He'll continue to bless you. Have you experienced the blessings of God when you trust in Him? Yes. When you follow Him, you find the blessings of God. Yes. So this would motivate people to follow Him. First, we can live in the love of God. Second, when we can you say it with me? We trust in God. We uh, have a rela good relationship with Him. And we obey God. Then His blessings will come to us. Yes. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things will be given to you. So this gives people motivation. Okay, now. So here I talk about love of God and the blessings of God. And then we also tell them. When you serve God. God will bless you more. Seek first the kingdom of God. And your life will be lifted up And when you bless people. And one way we can bless people is by telling people about the love of God. Another thing we can bless people is by <coughs> praying for people. For me, to experience the Holy Spirit is very important to bring up the people's spiritual life. So I just talked about first the love of God, live in the love of God. Mm -hmm live in the provision of God. That when we trust Him and follow Him, He'll provide for us. And third, we can serve God and God will bless us. When we seek the kingdom of God and serve God, He will bless us. And one way we can serve God is by, by praying for people, being nice to people, being kind to people. And I find that when I pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit, I can raise up their spiritual life. So this is very important in guiding God's people when we pray for them to experience the Holy Spirit. But how can we help people to experience the Holy Spirit? 
First, we need to have a close relationship with God. Take care of sins, have trust in God, follow the Bible, and worship in spirit and in truth. And His presence will come strong. Now, right now, I want to demonstrate praying for uh, whoever wants to come forward. Two persons, you want to experience the Holy Spirit more, you come forward, I'll pray for you to demonstrate how to pray for you to experience the Holy Spirit. Any two persons can come forward. Any two persons. Because this is very important in guiding people and raising up people's spiritual life. Thank God. Welcome. Congratulations. Okay. Congratulations for your courage. <laughs> yeah, you can stand here. So relax. Relax. And think of Jesus. Love him right now. And let your heart pour out. Pour out your heart to God. Mm -hmm. Think of Jesus. And pour out your heart to God. Okay? And then when I do that, I also do this. I pour out my heart to God. But this also, you know, actually. All spirit-filled Christians have the anointing of God, mm. but we need to, but we need to open our heart more mm. for a stronger anointing of God, and also pray more for a stronger anointing of God, that people can experience Him faster and stronger. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for loving us. You care about us. You are with us all the time. Be with us. Come, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We need you, Lord Jesus. We're so good. You're so wonderful. Hallelujah. You're so wonderful. We need you. We welcome you. you we, we worship you. We adore you. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now please keep your eyes closed. And I would like to ask you, have you experienced anything during the prayer? Yes. Can you describe it? Say it loudly so they can all hear you. Uh, that time of prayer. Can you say it loudly so they can hear? In that time of prayer, I have experienced the power of the Lord mm. moving in a mighty way. Hallelujah. Mm. That, that you feel the swing in the body, right? The body swing in the power of God. Yes. Do you feel, how about in your heart and over your body? Did you experience anything? Yes. What did you experience? I had that moping ground. Uh -huh. I've experienced that power of the Holy Ghost. Okay. Mm -hmm. How about, do you feel uh, peace yes. and comfort? over the body too, peace in your heart and comfort over the body. Yes. So that comes from the, the uh, presence of God. How about you? Have you experienced anything yes. during the prayer? Can you describe it? Okay, I've, I've experienced Can you freshness. speak louder, please? I've experienced a kind of freshness, freshness. all over the body, Hallelujah. all over my soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Now, when you see that you can experience God like that, do you want God to continue to bless you? Yes. So when you have a close relationship with Him, with him and trust in Him, He'll continue to bless you. Yes. Also, when you pray more, you can bless other people by praying for them. You can carry the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Do you want to be used by God like that? Yes. You can bring people to Jesus and you can also... Them what to experience, what they experience. This is very important because if they don't realize what they experience, they'll forget about it. And they don't know the significance. But when they express it, then they remember it. And then I will ask, encourage people to continue praying more, to continue to experience that every time they pray. And also I will encourage people to use that for evangelism or for raising up the spiritual life of people. And then when you pray more, you can raise up the spiritual life of people. So I'm showing you a way of serving God, to guide God's people first. To live in the love of God, to have the relationship, to enjoy God's presence every day. And after the prayer, also they will enjoy God's presence more. That, that every time they pray, they can experience God's presence. And the next is, 
that they know that when they trust in God, remember, trust in God, have a good relationship with Him, and obey Him, then God's blessing will be poured into His life. So to encourage people to continue to love God, and they can also serve God by having the power of the Holy Spirit. I have raised up people to serve God by letting them know the love of God, letting, letting them experience the love of God, and then knowing that to <coughs> trust in God and follow God and obey God, God will continue to bless them and I'll show them how to do it. By praying for people, by teaching people the word of God, they can serve God. And I've raised up people to serve God like that. Uh, this is just a simple version because of the time limitation. Just a simple version to tell you how you can guide God's people by God's love, by telling them what to do, that's God's law. The love and the law and how to serve God. But the law of God also has a, has a love of God in, in there because they know that when they uh, trust in God and have a good relationship with God and obey God, God will bless them. Amen. So that's the blessing there already. Amen. Now right now I'd like you to practice praying for each other because mm. you might say, oh, pastor, you can do it. I cannot do it. Mm. When you pray more, you will have the stronger presence of God. Mm. Actually, the two of you may notice that when I lay hand on you, very quickly you already experience the presence of God. Yeah. That you can build up. So now I would like you to do two by two. One person lay hand on the other one, but you try to worship in your spirit. And you can practice this by doing what? Pouring out your heart to God by saying, Ah, hallelujah. Yeah. Pour out your spirit to God. Yeah. Can you stand up together? And you pour your heart to God. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus! Hallelujah! Now, when you pray for people, you don't have to say it out loud like that. But you practice, uh, you do more of this. But when you, in the future, when you have prayed for, when you have prayed for a long time and the anointing of God is upon you, you don't have to say it out loud. You just pour your heart. Pour your spirit and he will come on you strong. So now you practice two by two. One person, uh, not holding hands, lay hand on the shoulder. Lay hand, you practice with your friend here. You practice with your friend here. Anyone left out can practice with uh, our team member. Okay? And, and one person lay hand on the other one. The other one just receive and put down the hand. One person lay hand on the other one. And lay hand very lightly. Don't put pressure. Don't put weight. Very lightly. Just touching. I can pray with you. over your person. So that's how real God is. Now you lay hand on me, your child. Reach out your heart to God. And then you say, in Jesus' name we pray, Amen. And then after you finish, you say, please keep your eyes closed. You say, listen to me. After you pray, you say, please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during your prayer? And you ask the person, okay? In the love of God. Believe that we are loved by God. And when we teach people, tell people they are loved by God, right here, right now, God's love is very intense and His nothing can separate us from His, from His love. So people strength, are strengthened by the love of God. And the next is to obey, to trust in God, to have a good relationship with Him and obey Him. Say this three again. Trust in God, Trust in God. Have a good relationship with God, and obey God, and He'll bless you in every way. So it's not just the love of God, but to respond to God, 
And then God will bless you in every way. And then a third is to encourage people to serve God. And serve by telling people about God's love and also praying for people. So when you pray for people, uh, first you have a strong anointing of God by practicing here more. Pray for each other and also pray much at home. And then when you pray at home, when you open your heart, now stand up please. You might feel a power pushing your body. Relax. Ah, it's not me swaying my body. It's the power of God pushing me. You close your eyes. Think of Jesus. And you find His power will come to you. So do that at home and let the power of God push you. And the more you open, more you're open, the more you experience His power. And His power will come strong upon you. And anointing will come strong upon you. And then that's the body, the power. But the next step to experience God is the inner experience. And gradually, you might experience His joy and His love. It, when I, any moment I think of Jesus, His love, His joy. <laughs> we just come to me. So it takes time. It takes time to have this strong presence of God. And then any time you pray, the joy will keep coming. So when you have experienced His power and the joy or peace, or the love or the comfort of God, let them come, become stronger. And then you have the power, strong anointing to pray for people. Practice with Christians first, and then go out. And the way I raise up my people is always to pray for them. And then experience God, and I will encourage them to obey God and serve God, and then I will raise up some people. And some people say, yes, I want to bless people. Yes, I want to bring people to Jesus. Yes, I want to bless people. I want to have the power of God to pray for people. And then you raise up these people. Some people just want you to bless them. But some people respond by saying, Yes, I want to serve God. I want to bless other people too. So you train these people and guide them along. That way, you know, you, so you have practice like this. And then you raise up people to serve God. So this is a, a brief uh, presentation on how to guide God's people.